Hello there. This is the family doctor. Yeah, just you lie still. Let me get through with you. And tell me later. Griff Miller, what in the world's the matter with you? Gosh, sir, Friday. How do you expect me to give you this treatment if you act like a two-year-old baby? Oh, oh Doc, you're tickling me so I can't stand it no longer. <laughs> tickling you? Yeah. Gosh, a great big grown man like you being ticklish. I never have thought it, Griff. I reckon I just got too many ribs or something, Doc. Well, all right. Now, let's see if I've done you any good. Let's see how you can stand on your feet now. Oh, well, well, I'll be fried. Yes, sir, Doc Adams, I can stand all right now. Yes, sir. Golly, sir, I thought when I come in here to you, I'd broke my back. Yeah, I broke my back. <laughs> no, you just dislocated a vertebra, Griff. Oh, now you're all ready to go back and start lifting those heavy boats of yours so you can break your back next time. Yeah. Uh, oh, 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 I see. <laughs> now you're joshing me, ain't you, Doc? <laughs> no, I'm not joshing. Well, uh, what do you mean, Doc? I mean that if you don't decide to follow the advice of this old family medical, something serious will happen someday. Now, I've told you several times the best thing you can do is to hire some good husky boy to do the hard work up there at your oh, boathouse. Oh, I... And you just be the boss. Oh, golly, Doc, I, I ain't never been a boss in my life. No, sir, I always just work for myself. I, I can't tell nobody else what to do. All right, then, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, Griff, if you don't start taking things easy up there at the lake, I'm going to have you committed as a charge of the county. Oh, then you will have to take things uh, easy. County? Charge? Oh. Uh, now, listen, Doc, you, you wouldn't do that. Uh, you wouldn't do that, uh, old Griff. <laughs> ah, you know I wouldn't, Griff. Uh, oh. But please, for my sake, take it easy, will you? Gosh, till Friday, I've got a lot of other things to think about. A lot of other people to take care of. I can't be forever fixing you up for something that's your own fault. Oh, well, all right, Doc. Now, will you promise to find a young fellow to do your hard work for you? Uh, yes, I guess I'll have to. Sure to thought this old carcass could never wear out, Doc, but I reckon it has, yeah. Reckon it's plumb or out. <laughs> well, not quite, Griff. Anyway, just be thankful that that old brain is still functioning. That's the most important thing. <laughs> Girl is, Doc. <laughs> What's the matter now? Uh, I just got to thinking. What in turn nation would Cedarton and Dunlap County do without you? Me? Oh, well, I guess you folks will get along all right. But don't worry, Griff. I imagine I'll be here for some time to come. I'm afraid Grand Adams, M.D., is a permanent fixture here. And we're all glad of that, Doc. Yes, sir, all glad of that. Well, uh, thank you again, Doc Adams. I better be getting on up to the lake. All right, Griff. Now, there's the phone. Well, goodbye, Griff. See you soon. Yes, sir, Doc. Uh, so long. Hello, this is Dr. Adams' office. Oh, yes, honey. Hmm? Oh, I'm about through now, I guess. Just have to clean up the office, put the instruments in the sterilizer. And... What's that? Oh, Mrs. Forrest. Marvin's mother? Up there? Oh, I see. Wants to talk to me, eh? Huh? Well, all right, Lou. I'll be right up home in a jiffy. Yeah. Uh, all right, honey. Goodbye. Hmm. 
Mrs. Forrest, eh? wonder what she wants. She's paid her account. Hmm. Well, nothing like finding out, I guess. There's Dr. Adams now, Mrs. Forrest. I'll bring him right in. Very well, Mrs. Adams. There's no hurry. Oh, Grant. Good evening, Lou. Well, what's the matter? You look as nervous as her old hen with her chickens out of the coop. Mrs. Forrest is in the parlor, Grant. I tried to find out what she wants, but she just wouldn't tell me. <laughs> Woman's curiosity, eh, honey? <laughs> now, don't laugh, Grant. I just know it's something mighty important. And you can call that woman's intuition if you want to. <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> Let's go in. We'll find out what it's all about. Well, good evening, Mrs. Horan. Good evening, Dr. Adams. Yeah, it's good to see you again so soon, and under slightly different circumstances than when we last met. Yes, slightly different. I don't want to embarrass you by continually thanking you for saving Marvin's life, Doctor, after that horrible accident. But I want you to know always that you have the undying gratitude of one mother who is very, very fond of her only boy. Oh, well, of course, that's the duty of a physician, Mrs. Forrest. Oh, yes. I know it's the duty of a physician to render aid in emergencies and to cure human ills and to save human lives. Why, certainly. But, Doctor, is it also the duty of a physician to guide those with whom he comes in contact into, into the right paths of thought, into the channels of wholesome living? Well, I... I don't think I... You don't know what I mean. Well, no, I don't. Uh, Mrs. Adams. Yes? I brought my boy Marvin to your city just two weeks ago. When we arrived, he was a headstrong, spoiled, arrogant product of too much money. I hadn't realized until last summer when he came home from military school on his vacation that Marvin had been so completely changed. I hadn't foreseen that he must someday graduate from boyhood into manhood. I hadn't realized that the very traits which we thought cute in him as a boy would be utterly impossible in him as a young man. But so it was. And I've been completely helpless in trying to cope with the problem. But in just two weeks, Mrs. Adams, your husband has changed all that. But, uh, but... How? Uh... How have you accomplished this, Doctor? Yes. Yeah. I don't know. I confess I don't know how you've done it. But you have, Doctor. Today, Marvin is thoughtful, ambitious. Friendly towards every person he meets. He's been so considerate of me lately. It's, it's been difficult to accept this new tenderness without giving way to foolish little tears once in a while. And I know, Dr. Adams, I know as surely as I know there's a heaven that you have been the direct cause of this transformation in my son. Well, I, I don't know what I can say to all this. I don't expect you to say a thing, Dr. But I do know it's true because of Marvin's complete and undying admiration for you. Well, I certainly shan't embarrass you further, Doctor, but this has just been a sort of preface to what I've really come to say to you. To you and Mrs. Adams. So? Yes. Mrs. Adams, it will undoubtedly surprise you to know that I had heard of the Doctor, heard of him many times, long before coming to Cedarton. Oh, really? Grant, just think of that. Heard of me? Oh, now. Yes, it's true. I can't tell you how I'd heard of you without violating a sincere confidence. Well, well. And now, I think I'd better come to the point at once. Yes, yes, if you don't mind, Mrs. Forrest, I, I guess I'm a little bit confused. Very well. Doctor, I am chairman of the Board of Governors of the David and Jonathan Hospital in New York City. A David and Jonathan Hospital? Is that so, honey? That's the famous hospital for children I told you about, remember? Oh, yes. You read me an article about it in the medical journal. Mm -hmm. Well, I came to Cedarton two weeks ago to find out more about this Dr. Grant Adams of whom I'd heard so much. I didn't realize, of course, that my errand of investigation was going to be brought so close to me, that my decision was going to be made so easy for me. But I have made my decision. I've communicated with the other members of the board, and they have concurred heartily with my plan. And so, Dr. Adams... Yes? As chairman of the Board of Governors of the David and Jonathan Hospital, I offer you a position on the medical staff as head physician in charge of the clinic. Oh, oh I... Grant. I, well, gosh, Dr. Friday. Grant. Oh, uh, excuse me, I, I didn't think what I was saying. I, uh, I... Doctor, Mrs. Adams, I know Cedarton needs you. I know how you love this little town. 
I'm fully aware of the great love the people here have for you both. But we need you, too. I'm not offering you money, Doctor. I'm not holding out the enticement of a large city. I know such things mean nothing to you. But I am extending an opportunity for greater service. Yours is the Ministry of Science, Dr. Adams. And the privilege has been given to me to offer you your call to larger fields. I know, of course, you'll want some time to think this over. Yes, yes. I don't want to hurry you, but I must return to New York very soon. So, when do you think I may call back to receive your answer? Uh, 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 the answer? Oh, yes. Well, I... Uh, yes, of course. Uh, Grant? Mrs. Forrest is asking when she may call for your answer. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Well, I... Uh, Mrs. Forrest, the doctor generally spends his Sunday afternoons at home, and I think if you call next Sunday, uh, that is, if you come for tea... Why, of course, I shall be happy to join you for tea. Well, then, until next Sunday. And I know deeply in my heart that your answer will be the right one. Goodbye, Mrs. Adams. Good afternoon, Mrs. Forrest. Goodbye, doctor. What's that? Oh, oh, yes. Yes, goodbye. See you Sunday. Yes, thank you. Goodbye. Oh, Grant. Just think what this means. Yes. I am thinking, honey. Leaving Cedarton. After 20 years. I just can't imagine it. Saying goodbye to all the folks that have been our friends for so long. The Blisses, the Windsors, and Mrs. Webb, and the Maynards. And leaving this old house where Grant Jr. and Alma and Fred used to play. Where they grew up and went away and... Where Grant Jr. and Nell were married. Oh, don't, honey, please. Oh, no. Of course, dear, I, I'm sorry. I just sort of let myself go for a minute. What are we going to do, Grant? What are we going to do? Lou? Well... I'll tell you, Lou, we're going to do what all people down through the years have done when they've had to meet a crisis face to face. We're going to pray. the family doctor. I'll be in to see you again right soon. Goodbye. Goodbye.